Hey guys, we're gonna talk about the Lone Wolf Custom Gear camera arm that I used during the 2023 deer season. Let's go check this thing out. Hey guys, how you doing? So I get a lot of questions about the equipment I use during the season. And I was asked, do I use a camera arm by a couple of people? And yes, I do. I usually don't post my videos, but I'll be doing a lot more of that during the season this coming year in 2024. Um, I will be posting the seven point I shot with the bow, um, just so you guys can see that. I shot that with my camera. Um, I did just buy a nice new video camera that I'll be using and 4K, um, but I was using the Lone Wolf Custom Gear. I like this because of how small it was. Uh, easy to pack. Um, this thing, if we get out a tape measure, you're gonna see. I'm um, going across, we'll go this direction, from about here to the edge. It's about six inches across, and I'll put all the specs up in the corner. Uh, and you can also look at those online on their Lone Wolf Custom Gear site. And for length, when you look at the length of this thing from the tip over here, we'll hold it about there, and it's about, yeah, about 12, 12 and a half inches going this way across. Uh, this one is the three arm camera arm. Um, they have a two arm, um, and I think that one's 199, and I'm trying to remember what the three is now i will put it up in the corner for you um, but let's put this thing on the tree and i'll show you uh, how it goes on the tree and then we'll talk about um, the pros and cons of it like i said one of the pros is how small it is compact it is you can see how skinny that is there's my finger you can see how skinny that thing is it's really only what this back part is only about you know just under probably about five eighths uh, thick so that's really thin so let's put this thing on the tree and I'm going to show you um, how it goes on and then I'll show you some of the issues that I was having and how I corrected that okay let's put it on the tree uh, one thing I did do to this uh, Lone Wolf camera gear on the end of the strap I added this bungee stuff uh, just sewed it on there with a little small box stitch and that just helps me when I'm closing this thing up be able to take that around and then just attach that loose strap so you don't have to worry about it. I do that with almost everything that I have that's hunting related. I put either a bungee cord or a bungee strapping on there and that way it just secures the ends. All right, let's put this baby on the tree. All right, to put this on the tree, you're basically going to take, unwrap your strap and you put this on the tree where you want it. You can see this is the only part that is on the tree right here and then you've got your screw in tip and you want this all the way in as much as you can you're going to depend on the trees and i'll talk about that in a little bit but you want that in because you want it to start off at an angle like this and then when you tighten it it'll put the tension on the strap so that your camera stays secure on the tree so we're going to put this on here and you can see that there and then the way you put it on so you got to go around the tree and you hook it back on. Now you got to remember, if you're in the tree, this is a little harder to do because you're facing the tree. This is a small tree. Um, then get your strap. You want it to be as level as possible. And then this is one of the problems that I had with this originally is you've got a very small profile on this backside. So you can try and get this straight, but if you push any pressure, it wants to fold over like that, which is a pain in the butt. So you got to get it, you play with it now that it's on there. And then you got to try and figure out on the top, there's a little bubble up here. And you want to get that as level as possible to start. And then what you'll do is start turning this to level it off. And you'll turn this until it gets perfectly into the middle of the bubble inside. Uh, you will hit your knuckles on this a couple times. So if you want to take that out, you can do that. So right now I'm getting close to the bubble. 
Now, if you are off on your bubble, the only way to do this is if you were to have this in here, if you were noticing that you were off already, would be to pull down and then try and push it over this little tip and then start screwing it in. Now, the problem is that I found with this is that if you've got a real barky tree, uh, this thing may want to slide to the left or the right. Same with this bottom part, it might come off. But if you tighten it down, and I'm about perfectly level there right now with the bubble inside. So now you've got this camera arm on there. I go a little more, and there we go. That is really solid on the tree. Um, I'm going to take you back a little bit with the camera. Hold on one second. Here's your end of your camera arm right here, right now. So right now we've got about from the tree, you've got about 27 and three quarters of a distance from the tree. It is very solid right now. Um, folding it up, it's really good for saddle hunting because you can be in close like this if you're facing the tree, which is really nice. And then you can basically go on either side of the tree with this. Works out really nice. All right, guys, so one of the issues that I did have, and I showed you that when we were putting this on the tree originally, was the stability of it when you're trying to put it on the tree. So I reached out to Genesis 3D Printing, and they sell this. This goes on the bottom right down here of your arm, which gives you that nice flat surface to keep that from flipping on you when you are trying to attach it to the tree. So let's take this off and I'll show you how it goes on. Very simple. And all you're gonna do is take this arm and put it on like this. Now it does change your profile a little bit, uh, but then all you have to do is once you put that on there is crank that baby down, put it down low so your arm can still move. But now you can see how that gives you a nice stable area to put it on the tree. So let's put it back on the tree now. Now we're gonna take it back around, hook it back on. And I want this thing to be level on the tree. And now you don't get as much of that rocking. When you hold it right here, you don't get that thing flipping on the tree. And then you can start screwing it into the tree and leveling it out. Again, move this out of the way so I don't hit my knuckles. And now you've got a really stable portion over here and I'll see if I can get you in there a little closer. You can see how you get a real stable setup right there. You're really Got a flat surface now for that basically to keep it from flipping on you. Sun came out, so we'll change the camera angle a little bit, but this gives you a really solid uh, base now. Now the issues that I had with this thing was this bottom part, first off, with this base being too skinny and it wants to flip when you're trying to tighten it. The other problem I had with it is the tip of this bolt that they have here. Problem with that tip is if you get a small tree, I found myself many times, I've got this thing in um, the way I would normally have it. Um, and then when you're leveling it, this tip goes into the tree and starts screwing into the tree and burying itself. So then you have to end up loosening it, loosening the strap a little bit and then starting to tighten again and then see where it goes. Because the issue that you have 
And I'm sure this thing is probably got a point so it doesn't move as much. But I'm guessing that if it didn't have a point on it, that it would probably stay pretty solid. But you can see that is a sharp point right here. And if you get a soft tree, like I said, and you've got it cranked really good, and you start to tighten, you're going to start tightening, and it, you're going to see that this thing is not moving and not leveling itself out because this thing just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper into the tree. Uh, so you have to back it off, loosen the strap, and then start doing it again. And sometimes you have to do that multiple times before you can get it level where this thing is not going into the tree any deeper. Um, but other than that, this thing was really pretty good during the season. Other than that, this thing worked out really good during the season. Those are the only two quorums I have with it. And we'll put the specs again up here in the corner. But this base from Genesis 3D Printing, I want to say it was like $18. I'll put that up in the corner also. But $18 solves the problem with this thing wanting to flip. Like this when you got it on the tree. It's wanting to flip. And then the other issue, which I can't really correct, is this portion with that pointed tip. Uh, that pointed tip, like I said, if you've got it and it's a soft tree, you'll start noticing when you're tightening, like I said again, you'll start tightening and it won't go, it won't level anymore. It's just that bolt's still just going into the tree, into the tree. You gotta loosen it, loosen the strap, start doing it again. All right, guys, so that was the camera arm that I used all during 2023's deer season, uh, which was pretty successful. Um, ended up shooting four deer, three bucks, and a doe. Um, and can't wait till the 2024 season begins. I've been out there scouting quite a bit already. Um, found some new spots, new sign. And now I'm going to basically wrap this back up, put that on. And you can see now your profile changed when you put this on here. You can take it off. I ended up leaving it on uh, just because if you take it off, if you put it in your bag, uh, you may not find it. Or if you take it off at home, you may forget to put it back in your bag. This way, I just leave it on there. It does change the profile a little bit. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have an awesome day, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.